Super City Auckland is a work in progress that the rest of New Zealand is watching closely. After all, it could be the way local government is about to go in other regions around other major cities. The emerging concern, could the super city formula turn a region's central business district into an all-consuming mothership that feeds on its outlying communities? It's certainly a concern surfacing in the new Auckland ward of Manurewa Papakura. Their elected ward board is unhappy. Their budget's being cut to fund a flower show instead of a local park and sports facilities. And big central Auckland development projects like the Central City Rail Loop, a cruise ship terminal, a super yacht refit facility and an innovation precinct at Wynyard Quarter are taking priority in the Super City's 10-year plan. So is Super City Mothership turning into Smothership? That's the theme Selwyn Manning explores with Manurewa Papakura Award Chairman Daniel Newman. Uh, welcome to the program, Daniel Newman. Thank you very much, Selwyn. Uh, the Manurewa Local Board is uh, unhappy in the sense that the Auckland Council is acting like a mothership and taking, uh, re taking decisions away from what you are claiming is, is rightfully uh, born in the local community. Mm. Um, how is this so? Well, Auckland Council has two parts. It has a governing body, which is responsible for regional issues, and it has 21 local boards that are responsible for everything else particularly the local issues. And what we saw during the recent uh, local government, local board negotiation with their funding plans with Auckland Council was Auckland Council strip out funding for a local community to put it back into its regional budget to pay for regional priorities. So you're talking about like, for example, you, you set a budget at your local board level. Mm -hmm. um, you've allocated where that money would be divided up and where yes. it would go to. Yes. And you're saying that the council exercises a veto over your decisions there? The council shouldn't, but the council did. It came in and said, uh, we are mothership, we know best, and we're going to take money from your budget line and we're going to reallocate it back into our budget line because that's what we think. And that's not the responsibility of the Mayor and the 20 councillors. Their responsibility is to focus on the regional issues affecting Auckland and leave the local boards to deal with those matters affecting local communities. But in our case, and only in our case, Auckland Council second guess the local board and strip money away from one of the poorest communities in the Auckland region. So you're saying it doesn't act in that same way with West Auckland or up northwest or North Shore? I think the precedent has been set now. If this can happen to Manurewa, it can happen to any other community and that's a real risk because Auckland Council has only just begun and what we are seeing is an increasing centralisation of responsibility, of decision making, of funding to the mothership uh, and away from the grassroots and that is exactly what Aucklanders feared about during the local government amalgamation. They worried about the loss of local control and I think that we're starting to see that under Mayor Len Brown. Was there any communication that went on to and fro before the Auckland Council actually said, right, no, this is how it's going to be, Daniel Newman, you and your board will not have a say in this allocation of funds? Well, certainly Auckland Council on the 23rd of May uh, made a decision that it would strip out $1.75 million from Manurewa. Uh, there was a flurry and exchange of email and, and conversation, uh, primarily led by me, but Auckland Council did respond. Uh, there was a discussion that took place with finance officers, with politicians, with uh, Mayor Len Brown, and indeed with the Chief Executive, Mr Doug Mackay. Uh, but at the end of the day, what they decided to do um, at the end of June was to affirm the recommendation to strip $1.75 million out of Manurewa's budget despite Manurewa advocating for the return of that funding to assist with local and okay. infrastructure. On what principle was it that they disagreed with your budget allocations or your budget components or where it was going to? Was it just purely and simply they said, OK, we're going to cut $1.75 million from your budget? It's up to you to decide what you're going to do with the remainder. Or did they say, we do not want money going to that particular project, we want it going to this? What they said was that the lines that we initially cut uh, were a mistake, that when we went through the mapping process, when the council officers mapped the budgets over, they incorrectly mapped two budget lines to the Manurewa Local Board when in fact they should have been mapped to the regional body. Unfortunately, as a result of that, uh, 
Monterey were made a decision. It was the right decision, quite frankly, because we can't afford to have hip hop concerts at a time when we need to basically maintain basic infrastructure such as cleaning our public toilets. Uh, but the council said no. Uh, it was a mistake on the part of the officers. It is a mistake that will be made in the council's favour, not in the community's favour. As a result, Monterey were lost the $1.75 million. And as a result of the big hole that they blew on the side of our budget, we need to make further cuts to ensure that we balance our budget, cuts that are quite unfair. Okay, if we look at the overview of this, you know, it's obviously the, the legislation is almost fresh off the page yes. um, with the Auckland Super City. Mm -hmm. um, if we look at its function in the last 20 months or so, right. yep. um, is, is, do you see that there is actually a structural imbalance that actually needs to go back to central government, back to parliament and be redrafted or at least reformed to put inequality back into what you're addressing as an inequality? I think that in hindsight, those of us who advocated for local government reform, and I was one of them, uh, we advocated on the basis of high trust. But the reality is there are aspects of reform that are not working. One of them is about the need to ensure an equitable allocation of funding. A funding formula provides for an equitable allocation across all the communities of Auckland. Auckland Council hasn't done that. Auckland Council has not adhered to the principle uh, that uh, they will engage in a good faith bargaining, particularly with the Monorail Local Board, uh, because we've been stripped of $1.75 million. Okay. And, and just finally, uh, Auckland Council uh, has not uh, upheld the view that if there are going to be funding cuts made, local board budgets should not be the first place to aim at. Mm. If we're going to peel it away, there right. seems to be an ironic situation that's developed. Mm. And it's got made a couple of notes. Right. Um, let's look at this. Um, you have a centre-right ticket, basically, in occupation in Manurewa at the moment. Mm. It's a, it's a centre-left bastion, in a sense. Mm. You've also got a situation where the centre-right ticket wants to spend funds on developing a project for what would traditionally be a low socio-economic area. Yep. But you've got a central council that is centre-left mm. that traditionally would look after those people and they're going and saying, no, it should go for a regional mm. type of fund um, that, like a flower show that would be more in keeping with the privileged in the city. Mm. I mean, how does this kind of situation develop and really, what does it say to you as a local politician about the function of the politics of the region? What I'd say is that at the local level, you see good intentions coming from everywhere, uh, irrespective of one's political values. So the Manurewa Local Board is unified to every member that we should be addressing those infrastructure deficits and giving uh, poor kids in South Auckland, the very best sporting and community infrastructure. At Randwick Park. Absolutely, at Randwick Park, at Netball Monterey, we're at Mountford Park. We should have CCTV in our town centres. We absolutely have to fund basic core infrastructure. Okay. I was going to just raise up, like one of the things, just a quote here in the Manukau Kauri newspaper, it quotes you as saying um, that Auckland Council has harvested cash from the outer suburbs of Auckland to fund Len Brown's pet projects in the CBD. Absolutely. So it's like a vacuum cleaner. Yes. Uh, now, I'm just thinking here, isn't this clever politics in the sense that you've got centre-right politicians that have actually identified a failure of the centre-left council in supporting mm. this particular group here and you're exploiting it, you're occupying that vacuum and you're going for it big time to expose the frailties perhaps in the political arrangements at central government? I'm here to deliver back for my community and political ideology doesn't come into it. I have always believed that we need to ensure that we have the best services available to all people in our community. Uh, the fact is that the Manurewa Local Board was elected uh, with a mandate to represent our community and that is precisely what I and my colleagues intend to do. I'm not responsible for the political decision making of the Mayor and the 20 councillors. But I do think it is ironic that people who marched uh, against reform on the basis that they wanted to preserve local democracy seem to be the same people that are stripping local democracy away via the decisions that are being made around the council right. table. One of the things that concerns me, mm. on Friday night I went down to Manurewa and right. I had a little bit of a look around. Yep. Refreshed my knowledge from when I grew up. Mm. If you take a walk down Manurewa, I made a couple of notes here, on a Friday night, 
it seems the only entertainment that's on offer in the main street mm -hmm. is side street prostitution, CD bars, and just a 50, uh, 50 metre walk between Hill Road and Helver Road on just one side of the street. Mm. There are three gaming bars, right, wall to wall with pokies. In between those, equidistant, is instant cash loan type of situations. They didn't spring up over the last two years. Mm. They've been 10 years in the making. Isn't it a right. bit rich for your centre-right councillors to come out and start saying, we are looking after all people in Manurewa when this situation is developed and is obvious to anybody who has a look. I'm very proud of the Manurewa Papakura Ward councillors who are working with the local board uh, to ensure that we get the very best allocation of funding that we can get under these difficult circumstances to fund community infrastructure. Yeah, but you, and you, you, I, and, you, you and, campaigned and you, you were a protester mm. in trying to get rid of liquor outlets in Manurewa. And it I has am become forward, like a poster. And I am place. looking forward to the passage of the alcohol reform bill so that we can develop local alcohol policies to ensure that the community has a say in closing down these establishments that are wreaking havoc. It is not just in our town centres, it is in our suburban neighbourhoods as well. We need to address that, we need to address street prostitution, we have legislation before the parliament. I do hope that Lewisa Wall and other MPs from South Auckland will vote for the passage of that legislation because if we had the tools to, to act on that, most certainly there would be an immediate response and it would be a thorough response for the betterment of the wider community. Mm. If we look at the big picture solutions to mm. Auckland as, you know, for Auckland as a whole. Right. Right. Um, last week, for example, Research New Zealand released a survey showing 63% support for the Auckland rail loop. 29% supported in opposing that, so mm. I should say. Um, the other 8% either did not know or did not care. I mean, it, 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 this seems to be a valid question when you observe local government politics here. Why is central government and conservative-leaning Auckland council, council laws, politicians, rallying to try and stop the public getting what it wants on the rail loop type of situations? Well, I think that the issue that needs to be addressed, and certainly I make no bones about my concern about the city rail loop is that a $2.8 billion price tag, $2.8 billion and climbing, that price needs to be paid by someone. And I'm very concerned about who in Manurewa can afford it. But what, and, but, and but the what National Party campaigned in 2008 on an infrastructure ticket. It got a mandate from the public. A big slice of Auckland voted right. for it on an infrastructure ticket. Surely yeah. now the public is saying, 63% are saying, we want this. Surely the council and central government should be actually working in tandem with that want and delivering. I certainly think that the uh, Auckland Council needs to be going to government and saying, what deal can we cut on this issue? But rail is not the only infrastructure need. Completing and improving the capacity of State Highway 1 south of Readout Road so that two motorways don't turn into a car park in Manukau at 4 o'clock in the afternoon is a big priority. It is the biggest transport priority for the south, arguably. The other point that I would make is that affordability always has to come into the question. My constituents don't have the ability to suck up never-ending permanent rate increases, and neither can the community, neither can the community or the local board afford to just forego our local priorities in order to fund the mayor's election promises. So there needs to be a balance, and part of that balance is about timing. It is about affordability and it is about a business case that actually works. And I am very comfortable expressing a view to the effect that there needs to be very careful due diligence here because the, the impact of multi-billion dollar spending means more borrowing, higher cost of borrowing and permanent rate increases which are metered home to people who don't have the ability to afford it. Daniel Newman, thank you very much. Thank you, Selwyn. Selwyn Manning was talking with Daniel Newman, Chairman of the Auckland Manurewa Papakura Ward Board. He's a Director of the Property Council and formerly a Manukau City Councillor. And that's all for now. We're back again same time next week with more of our country's newsmakers 
on the Beatson interview. Till then, thanks for your company. See you soon. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.